So recall that when referring to the parts of the derivative, dx, dy, that we call these differentials. And we're saying that we're going to define the total differential to be dz equals the um, partial derivative of f um, with respect to x times dx plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y times dy if the function is a two variable function f of x, y. If it's a three variable function, it's very much the same. We're just going to define the total differential to be dw. And then we're going to have the three terms, um, partial derivative with respect to x, dx, partial with respect to y, dy, and partial with respect to z, dz. So let's look at an example where we actually calculate these uh, par total differentials. This one would be number 10 in section 14.4. The instructions are to compute the differential dz or dw of the specified function. And they're referring to the total differential when they say that. They give us the function z equals e to the xy. Since it's a two variable function, we're going to use the first definition of total differential. So um, in order to find dz, we're going to need to know f of, well, the partial derivative of f with respect to x and with respect to y. So let's go ahead and figure those out. So first we're doing the partial derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of e to a power is e to that power times the derivative of the exponent, in this case the partial derivative, holding y as a constant, so we get y. So we have y e to the xy. Next, the partial derivative with respect to y. This time we're holding x to be constant. So we have e to the xy times x times y's derivative is x, so x e to the xy. So when they're asking us for the total differential, all they're asking us for is dz equals y e to the xy dx plus x e to the xy dy. All right, now let's look at number 20, the same instructions, but with a three variable function, w equals the square root of x plus the square root of y plus the square root of z. And so we have three partials to find. We have dw dx, which is going to be the partial with respect to x. So we have 1 half x to the negative 1 half plus 0 plus 0. Or another way of writing that is 1 over 2 square roots of x. The partial of w with respect to y is going to be 1 half y to the negative 1 half plus 0 plus 0, or 1 over 2 square root of y. And the partial with respect to z, 1 half z to the negative 1 half. or 1 over 2 square roots of z. So plugging into the formula, the total partial dw is going to be 1 over 2 square roots of x dx plus 1 over 2 square roots of y dy plus 1 over 2 square roots of z dz.
Okay, now let's use the total differential for what it actually is, which is an estimate of the change in the function's value. Um, so here we have an example, it's number 22 in section 14.4. Use a total differential to approximate the change in the values of the function f from p to q. So p and q are two points in the domain of f, and we're going to compare the estimate with the actual change in f on that interval. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find well, what we're going to call df, this is the same thing a minute ago that we were calling dz, it's just that I didn't give the name z to it in this case, so we're just going to call it df. And so we're going to need the partial derivative of f with respect to x times dx plus the partial derivative of f with respect to y x of xy times dy. Okay, so um, in order to find this, uh, we need the partial derivatives. So let's look here at holding y constant. So then the derivative is just going to be treating this as if you would say a 5 or a 10 or whatever the case may be. That one stays the same. So we have um, just to take the derivative of x to the 1 -third. So we have 1 -third x to the negative 2 thirds times y to the one-half times dx plus holding x constant we have x to the one-third times the derivative of y to the one-half which is one-half x to the negative one-half oh excuse me y to the negative one-half dy okay so that's the formula for df now remember df is an approximation of delta f, which is the change in the function f. Now, we're going to use the point x naught y naught, which, let me get a different color going here, if I can. So, this is our starting point, and we're looking at from p to q, it means we're starting at p, so this is our x naught y naught. This is our x naught plus delta x, so this is the changed value, and this is our y naught plus delta y. So, we want to evaluate this approximation at x naught y naught, which is 8, 9. So we're going to plug that in for each x and y. So we're going to have 1 third times x to the negative 2 thirds is going to be 8 to the negative 2 thirds, or the cubed root of 8 squared, which is 4. And then y to the 1 half is going to be 9 to the 1 half, or the square root of 9, which is 3, times dx, and we'll talk about dx in a minute plus x to the one-third is going to be 8 to the one-third, or cubed root of 8 is 2, times one-half, times y to the negative one-half, which is going to be one-third. And I just realized I made a mistake over here. This was a negative two-thirds, so that was saying one over, so we have one-fourth instead of four. Okay, and then this is times dy. So over here, we're going to have one-third and three cancel, leaving us with one-fourth of dx plus the two and the one-half cancel, leaving one-third dy. All right, now what do we do about this dx and dy? Well, remember that dx and delta x are the same thing in this case, so what we're going to do is look at how has x changed. In other words, delta x or dx is really going to be 8, um, let me take that back, it's going to be the ending point minus the starting point, so 7.78 .7 minus 8, which is negative 0.22, and delta y, or dy, is going to be 9.03 minus 9, which is 0.03. 
So this is going to give us 1 fourth of negative 0.22 plus 1 third of 0 0.03, which is going to give us negative 0 0.045. Okay, so we just found that the change in the function f is approximately negative 0.045 because that's the total differential. Now, let's go back and actually calculate the change in f just to compare. And so the change in f is referring to um, f of x plus delta x, y plus delta y, minus f of x, y. So, in other words, we're going to plug in the point Q, and we're going to plug in the point P and subtract. And so, we have f of 7.78 comma 9.03 minus f of 8, 9. Now, that's just telling us to plug into the function, so you're going to have 7.78 to the one-third times 9.03 to the one-half, which comes out to be 5.954 minus 8 to the one-third is 2, 9 to the one-half is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, and so subtracting we have negative 0.0456. So if you compare these, they're only off by six ten thousandths. Now one note I want to make about um, the difference between delta f and uh, df is that um, it has to be very small. In fact, the error will be less than the distance between P and Q. So what that means is if P and Q are relatively close together, our error is very, very small. So let's check that out, and we'll talk about why it should be um, less than the distance between P and Q in a minute, but let's just compare um, the difference between these two values, which was less than 0 0.0006, and to the distance between P and Q. Okay, so the distance between P and Q, we're going to take the difference in the x values minus n or squared plus the difference in the y value squared, which another way of saying that is delta x squared plus delta y squared square root. Now, delta x we already discussed was um, negative 0.22. How did we get that again? The difference in the x's. So 0.22 squared plus 0.03 squared. And so this is going to be the square root of 0.0484 plus 0 0.0009, which works out to be 0.2220. Now, 0 0.0006 is definitely less than 0 0.2220. Okay, now, how did we know that the distance between P and Q puts a bound on how different the uh, total differential can be from the increment of F? Well, it has to do with how we will choose to define differentiability and the fact that this will be a differentiable function. And we'll do that in the next segment.